Hi everyone, I'm Mick. Welcome to my shop. So today I'm going to be installing a cooling system that I bought from my mill uh, from a company called, uh, what is it called? Stupid Simple? Stupid Simple Tools. Um, I bought a tramming device for the mill from them earlier and then saw this. It's uh, supposed to be um, kind of a, a hybrid between flood coolant and mist coolant I guess closer to mist but it's not supposed to put out that fine mist that gets in the, in the, in the air everywhere that you end up breathing and all that so um, let's take a look at it and hook it up alright so here's the box I did open it uh, but I actually haven't un, uh, unpacked it yet I took a look at what was in here and uh, just kind of left it. And bracket. Hose. Uh, regulator. for the coolant container mag base Like this is going to be the coolant. Sorry about that. Bumping the camera. Nova style base. Nice. And uh, looks like it's got a special adapter on the end. That's right, they call it the Lube Cube. So it's got uh, flow adjustment here. I guess it comes out on this end. And you run lines for both the air and the coolant. Cool. Alright, looks like i got to go get the manual. Make sure I'm putting this thing together right. Okay, must be 
inlet and outlet, I guess. All right, well, I guess I'm going to go download the manual, take a read through it. Oh, okay, just notice the hose is actually two pieces put together. So it's specifically designed for that. I think that'll work. I think I'm going to mount that right there somewhere. About like that. So I've got this air hose here, which is hanging down from the ceiling. That'll be my source of air for it. And then right above it here is a vacuum port uh, for when I'm doing things like um, cast iron and stuff. So I think uh, this is the back side of the mill. This is a, a panel that I, I built and put up there to keep chips from flying out the back um, because I actually my mill kind of sits in the in the middle of my garage. So, yeah, I think something like that. That'll work perfect. It's easy to get to, so I can top off the fluid, uh, the coolant, and I can see how much is in there. All right, I'm going to go get the manual and uh, take a read over that. And looks like this is going to be pretty simple. So let's get this set up and see how it works. All right, I've read the manual, and it's about as simple as it can be. Um, they don't mention that... They have the two gauges. This one came on it. And um, I decided to replace it with the other one that came with it just because it's their brand and it's black and I kind of like it. So, Alright, so let's get that new uh, gauge on. I've heard conflicting things about whether or not you should use Teflon tape on pipe fittings like this, especially on uh, compressor lines, because they claim that uh, you get it over the edge and it starts to uh, break off and go into the airstream. So, just got to be very careful. I, so I am particularly careful now about getting it just on the, uh, the threads there and not over into where it can be inside the, the airline. One of the things my dad taught me when I was a little kid is when you're putting Teflon tape on like this, turn the fitting the direction you're going to be turning it when you screw it in when you're putting the, uh, the Teflon tape on. That way it doesn't unravel as you're putting it on. So one of the other things with the way how, how uh, this brass part of this fitting is here, there's not much room there. So I get a chance to use my ultra thin or super thin, whatever they call them, wrenches. Um, so these things are perfect. You can see how that'll get down in there. I actually uh, did a little review of these. It was one of the first videos I did. And I don't use them very often, but when you need them for something like this, you need them. And they were inexpensive. My favorite kind of of tool, good quality and inexpensive. All right, let's go with that. And then I'm going to screw a uh, fitting 
on. I uh, use all of these high flow fittings on all of my air lines in the garage. It's uh, not needed in this case, but like I said, they are all this high flow. Um, and uh, for air tools, things like uh, cutters, grinders, you name it, um, it's amazing how much of a difference it makes. And uh, very, very pleased with them. The only thing I've heard about them that is uh, apparently not all that great for like production shops, big, you know, full time shops, stuff like that, is that because they're aluminum, uh, they don't tend to be as durable as uh, the steel fittings. But uh, I haven't had any problems with that, so. All right, and that is going up on this side. Size is that. Yes. Nine sixteenths. No. Appears to be metric. I shall return. So, got my favorite metric wrench. Yeah, the other reason I've heard that it's not necessary to use Teflon tape on these fittings is because they are tapered pipe fittings. And I guess theoretically as you tighten them, they should self-seal. But I was always taught to use Teflon tape and always have, so never had a problem. Anybody uh, has any feelings on that one way or the other let me know. I'd be interested to hear what you think. nice heavy mag base too so I guess if I don't have a magnetic surface I can just set it there and it turns out you do not have to remove the top from this container it has a fill hole on top so although I'll have to use a funnel for that parts. Turns out these are need a five millimeter Allen key.
one more thing I wanted to do before I mount this is I want to double check and make sure that where I'm mounting it that this double air hose the coolant and air hose that comes out of here is going to reach around and uh, is going to be long enough to reach. I suppose I can go down to the store and buy just some two pieces of hose the, the right length but I kind of like having it put together like that. So let's uh, I'm going to check that out and then we'll come back and if it looks like it's going to be okay I'll uh, mount this on the back of that uh, backboard. All right, I've got that mounted on the back of the backboard for the mill. The hose is perfect, uh, absolute perfect length. Um, so it's going to go around the side here. After I get it hooked up, I'll uh, bring the camera around and, and show everybody, show you all how this works. Um, that right there for now. There. Split these apart a little bit, they are the same size. dog is not liking something out there. Probably a squirrel for the kids next door. Wow, that's some tough hose. There we go. That should be good. See if I can get that on there a little better later, but Guess I better make sure that these are the same. The coolant one goes to the coolant, and the air one goes to the air. Huh? Oh, I need to 
look at the manual again. See if, because there's no markings on here. The nipple that isn't connected to the pickup line is the air line. Well, duh. Oh. Alright, so this one on the back here is the coolant line. I'm obviously getting better at some of these things because I thought of this before I put it all together and turned it on. Now watch, I'll still get it wrong anyway. Alright, that went on nicely. Put this back over here on the mill. And let's get some coolant mixed up for this thing. I think that's about it. Alright, I'll get some coolant mixed up, put it together, and uh, get the airline uh, hooked up, and let's see how it works. Okay, I've got it all hooked up, tested it. It uh, works, seems to work very well. Um, I mixed up a batch of coolant and uh, got the airline hooked up. You can see the coolant is flowing through the one hose. So let's go over to the mill and take a look. So this way is all the way off on this way is all the way off on the coolant. You can see the three circles versus what is it? Seven circles. Um, so I'm going to turn the air compressor on. Um, one thing that I did discover is I want to put a valve over there on the back side uh, where the air hose connects to the regulator uh, because my air compressor, I have multiple drops off of it and um, so I use it as just a blowgun and other things like that and I don't want air constantly coming out of this thing even if I turn the coolant off when the air compressor is on so I need to get a, pick up a valve and put that on but anyway fire up the air compressor here alright so there's air coming out I have it set for around 10 PSI, something like that, the regulator that's attached to the tank, uh, which they say 10 to 30 is what they recommend. So I'm going to open up the valve for the coolant now, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. Let me get a piece of paper see if that'll help. So here we go. There you go. So I will uh, try this out. Luckily this coolant is uh, actually pretty nice smelling. Um, it's kind of a strange brand. It has no specifics on ratio or anything like that, although they say the maximum ratio is 53%. I uh, did it at a 3 to 1. Um, so looks like that'll be pretty good so I'm excited now to try something cutting something on the mill and try this out so anyway I'll uh, let you know how it goes and uh, I'm sure you'll be seeing this a lot in future videos thanks a lot and uh, take care